So this evening we're absolutely delighted to be joined by former parliamentary liaison officer Jeff Feezy. Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. How are you doing? It's a pleasure, Si. Nice to talk to you. And welcome to England and what is a very sad and a very tense nation at the moment. It sure is, Jeff. Um, first of all, we're going to be talking about the elections, um, politics, your former parliamentary liaison officer. Just give an insight. What does that mean? OK, I liaised with uh, the Ealing churches in the UK and Parliament, which was a brand new format for the church. It was devised by somebody who actually works in Parliament, who came to the conclusion that the uh, civil service in Whitehall and most of the members of Parliament didn't understand the church, or what they would call the new church. They knew about the Anglicans, the Catholics, the Methodists and the Baptists, but any church that was formed uh, within a hundred years, uh, they had very little knowledge of. And so a program was devised called Grassroots, where every denomination that was born within the last hundred years would have a representative in Parliament. And for four years, I fulfilled that role. I was the first one for Elim. And it meant liaison with um, members of Parliament, with some of the Lords in the, in the House of Lords, and with Whitehall. And it, it brought to light a number of things that was quite crucial. Um, they didn't realise how much involvement the new churches had in the community, for instance, and how many people were involved on the local ground level activities with uh, social care and uh, food banks and, and schools and that kind of thing. It brought something to light that was very interesting. Let's take an example from the last decade or so in Parliament, in your thoughts, from your experience as well. Some of the, some of the policies that we're seeing in Parliament. Do we have enough Christians in Parliament, in your opinion? Uh, well, we don't have enough Christians in Parliament, and we ought to have more. That's on a negative side. But on a positive side, there are more Christians in the House of Commons now than there ever have been. There are 650 MPs, and totally outnumbered, of course, by many others. But there is a very strong Christian voice. And political parties of all persuasion meet for prayer, Every week in the House of Commons, the, the Conservatives, the Labour, the Liberals, all of them meet together for prayer. And it's a, a, quite a strong voice now in Parliament. And I think some of the things that we're seeing recently uh, have come from the strong voices of morality and righteousness and, uh, and something of, of a God-fearing nature. I think there's a, a very strong move at the moment to be more proactive in the country than there ever has been. How important is it that we have some Christian heritage in Parliament and our Christians are involved in some of the policies that have been brought, brought out in the United Kingdom today? Well, if we go back into history, uh, the, the Christian voice was very, very strong at the birth of Parliament. They always prayed at the beginning of every session. There was a Bible always on the uh, dispatch box, right next to the dispatch box in Parliament. And it really was a very strong voice. But I think it's interesting how the last hundred years have evolved. I'm a third generation Christian. My grandfather was a first generation Christian in the new move of God that took place in the early 1900s. And they were rejected in the main by the established churches. And so they used a verse that came very strongly at that time, come out from among them and be separate. And so they did, they came into a kind of haven and they sheltered for a while because they were ostracized and rejected by the main churches. But as the years have gone by, my father, second generation, then myself, then my son, who is also in the ministry in our church in Harrogate, we, it's become very obvious that we need to engage mm. and not be separate. And I think the engagement that we're having now as a church and as churches is quite remarkable. And the MPs that we contacted and talked to were utterly amazed that, that so much activity was being run by the local church. If you took the church out of the community, some of those programs would just grind to a halt and nothing would happen. So schools and food banks and care in the community, all kinds of social activities for drop-in centres, housebound, elderly, children, all of that financed and run by the church is, is quite remarkable. And it's a good age. We're engaging more than we have for many, many years. Now, when we look towards the future and we look at the, the generation that we have at the moment and trying to introduce young people into politics, because that is our future, really. In your opinion, yes. how do you think we can get more young people interested in politics? 
That's a very hard one, and it would be very difficult to answer in a, in a very quick time. The younger generation, I think, in the main, have rejected politics. They've become disenchanted by some of the activities of some MPs. Uh, some of the rhetoric coming out occasionally puts them off and turns them away. But I think just recently there's been a move amongst young people to get more engaged with politics. And uh, forgive me, I think the figure is something like 250,000 young people have registered to vote for the first time in this upcoming ge uh, general election. I think it's around 250,000, which is quite an amazing thing. Why do you think there is such an increase of young people in this election who are voting now? I think the, the state of the world. Uh, I think some of the activities that have happened in our nation over the past couple of weeks has, has been a wake-up call. And I think it's, uh, I feel, the young people feel duty bound now to get involved and say something and do something and let their voice be heard. And at every general election, there are new voters, obviously, because they're coming of age. And I think at this, this time, there's been a, a real spurt forward in people wanting to vote and wanting their voice to be heard. Not enough, but we ought to be grateful for what's happening. And in sight of the recent terror attacks that have taken place in Manchester, but most recently in London as well, how do you think our leaders should be dealing with these current terrorist situations? Well, it's interesting today. I listened to a programme this morning, just getting ready for this particular programme, and all parties are saying enough is enough. Uh, I think we've been very tolerant. The human rights issue and all of that comes into play. And I think we've tried to appease, we've tried to be careful and gentle, but I think that the message at the moment is enough is enough. I think because we're starting to see a change in the way that terrorism is, I mean, they were targeting young children we saw in Manchester, and that's, that's changed the way that we kind of see how I think it's time for our leaders, our world leaders, to unite together, especially at times like this, to really show a strong force as one. Absolutely. I ought to be interviewing you. That's a great comment. Um, yes, we've been trying to be careful, haven't we? We've been trying to appease, we've been trying to be gentle and integrate people. But I think, as, as I heard today, one of them say, enough is enough. It's time for action and not words. And to target children and to target young people, as it was in London recently, when just young people having a good time, having meals, drinking and having a good social time, to target that kind of thing, not just infrastructure, but actually young people and children, I think that's, that's crossed the line and I think it's a huge wake-up call to our nation. And in your opinion, what does it take to be a leader, Jeff? We're talking about leading our nations, but we can also be talking about leading the churches. How do we bring churches together at times like these? I think we need strong moral leadership. I think some of the, the role models that we've had uh, in the nation, particularly in the, the celebrity world. People have lost their moral compass. They don't know right from wrong. Uh, they don't know what is good and what is bad, righteous or unrighteous. And I think to be a leader today, we've got to be very courageous and make a stand to say, this is wrong and that is right. These are things we shouldn't do. These are things we should be doing. And taking a very strong stand on morality and righteousness. Bible says that righteousness exalts a nation and sin is a curse. And I think we need to be more righteous and more, more strength added to our, our, our appeals and our politics and our religious and Christian leadership. Um, vital today more than ever. There's a moral compass is missing and nobody knows which is right and which is wrong anymore. OK, Jeff, thank you so much indeed for joining us. That's Jeff Feasy, former parliamentary liaison officer. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. God bless, brother. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Sai.